<laughs> See now, Mike, take all those tracks and you know edit them together so it works, and then loop it. Yeah, and then loop it. Coconut. Five year mission. The podcast. Episode 57. By now you figured out that this is a five-year mission podcast. Welcome to the five-year mission podcast. I am Mike. I will be kind of the host this evening, but really you have four hosts and no guests. Uh, joining me tonight is going to be Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. And Patrick. Hello. And I suppose the kind of the focus of this episode, uh, is Noah. What? Oh, okay. I'm here. Uh, you're, you're the focus because, uh, we are discussing a mock time, which is, uh, course the episode of star trek but also a song second to last song on year two the first song in star trek season two right first and, first episode and, and the first episode of season two yes what so what? we really felt like we were getting somewhere <laughs> <That's> true <laughs> what's uh what chris i said what's a mock <laughs> what's what's a mock <laughs> it's, it's pronounced it's pronounced amic Amic. Oh, okay. No, I, I was confused. I don't I think it. that this is the episode that we had trouble pronouncing the title. No. What's the next one? <laughs> that one's coming up. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, real quick before we get into talking about the song, uh, why don't we discuss the episode that inspired it? Um, as Patrick said, it was the first episode of the second season of Star Trek. Uh, after they came back from their short summer break, after the 30 episodes of the first season, uh, they uh, came back with this episode, which focused on Spock because, of course, everyone loves Spock. And so from this point on, it's like all about Spock. Um, what uh, What did you guys think of uh, Amok Time? I, I love the episode. It's a classic. You get... All this Vulcan background that you'd never seen before with the, um, you know, now I can't think of what anything is called anymore. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the pond far and the, far in the Kali uh, of the uh, Ali Oxen yeah, Free. <laughs> yeah, the Ali Ali Oxen Free. Right. Up and until this see... point in the series, is kind of like a token alien character, you know, yeah, it's before the they explore this background. Is it the Kunakala fee? Is that right? Kunakala like fee. That? That's it. Yeah, that's I think, right. yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So you. you get to see this background on Vulcans, but you also <laughs> get to see Spock in a completely uh, a way we've never seen him before. And it's, uh, you know, out of the episode came one of the most iconic scoring sections <laughs> of all of Star Trek with the battle music. So it's it's a great episode. I love it. I agree on all those points. It's a real uh, Spock character building episode, which up until that point, I, I mean, I think Patrick is right there. He, he almost felt a little two dimensional um, yeah. up up to that point. And then all of a sudden there was depth to the character um, that they were uh, fleshing out. So that was just a really important episode. Isn't, didn't this episode also give us the, the Vulcan hand signal? Or was that something that they had done previously? Because I'm pretty sure he said he came up with it for this specifically. I think you're right, Patrick. Yeah, I think you are right. I think yeah. this is the yeah. first time yeah. they featured that. Well, I think it's yeah. the first episode where we've seen other Vulcans too, right? Yes, probably. So probably. I'm not sure. It's hmm. definitely the first Vulcan-centric episode. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, if Which we get this it... wrong, we're going to get so many emails, <laughs> so many emails correcting us. <laughs> no, no, nobody emails anymore, Noah. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, aren't we supposed to watch these episodes before we do these things? <laughs> <laughs> We're just relying it. on memory <laughs> of years ago. Well, and speaking of memories of years ago, this is another one that stuck out in, in my brain from even uh, childhood when I was watching them. Um, just because it's, you know, anyone where you've got cool weapons and a fight is one that, you know, sticks in my my eight-year-old brain yeah. and then that was definitely one that you know had cool weapons and fights and we get the almost... lerpa but yeah yeah to see a lerpa yeah. and there wasn't there some kind of knife or something there were other vulcan weapons yeah. i feel like there's some kind of the, like the glove whip, it was like a a whip or a chain or something yeah so it was we also get to see some questionable slicing of shirts and cuts <laughs> yeah things like that yeah with the the little lipstick line on the yeah yeah, yeah, right. yeah yeah and i one thing had we seen there was another episode oh, i think it was one of the paradise episodes yeah. what was the one with yep. paradise flower where we got to see spock angry this right. is the first time we get to see him it's not even anger it's just this pr- uh, primitive drive it's really kind of cool because he goes after kirk right and he doesn't it's it's like he doesn't have control over himself which is another thing that's unusual because vulcans are so their ability to control their emotions is kind of iconic as far as the race goes yeah this is the episode where he smashes the computer monitor with his fist Okay, oh, this I one is. Yeah, I couldn't oh, okay. remember. If I could. This was the one. Yeah, I always get that in Paradise mixed up. Yeah, where this he side gets of Paradise angry. was the one. Yeah, yeah. Believe. And also, okay. and also, this so this is like the rematch between Kirk and Spock. Oh yeah, that's right. Because in the side <laughs> of Paradise, they did kind of brawl in the transporter yeah. room. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, it's not really a brawl. I mean, it really wasn't a brawl so much <laughs> as trying to make him angry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I like. I, I love this episode. It's iconic. Agreed. Noah, when you got this episode, did you did you know it well when you drew it? I did. It was one that I knew. Um, I don't know how well. I mean, I, I certainly didn't know Kuna Kalafi and Pan Far language at the time. Um, but I, I knew of it. I knew this is the one where, you know, he has to go back to Vulcan and he has to fight Kirk and you know there was you know hormone stuff going on the um the scenes that have been parodied so many times in other movies and tv shows yeah yeah yeah. Uh, i just i just i knew it was an important episode um it was one that i knew i was gonna have to take seriously and do well and and was one that i really you know knew uh, people i knew it was an iconic episode and people were gonna be asking about that song just based on the episode so i i I wanted to make it something that wasn't gonna disappoint people you know when they heard it i i think this could have arguably been one of the top most anticipated most anticipated episodes that we were going to do just because of how iconic the episode is yeah, and I mean, we wound up playing it live like three times. <laughs> it was more than that. I'd say it was more like like five or six times. <laughs> well, as I recall, there were reasons for that. Once once we had the Lerpa battle, <laughs> yeah. I think we we definitely needed it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, speaking of the song, Noah. Yeah. Tell us what. How, how did you go about uh, writing the song? Yeah. Um, again, this is one I knew I had to take seriously. Um, I think I had, a, a unlike me, I think that I, this time I had a lot of the lyrics ahead of time. Um, I might not have had them all the way shaped and formed in the, in the right cadence and rhythm or anything, but I had a lot of what I wanted to say ahead of time. Um, I kind of took the lyric writing first uh, and then came up with the music, which is usually the absolute opposite of what I do every single time, which is always <laughs> music first and then lyrics. Um but this is an interesting song uh, to me, and I think in, to in, in in five year mission 
history here because I believe it is our only song in drop D tuning mm -hmm. recorded in drop D. We haven't done anything else in drop D, have we? Anybody? No. Uh, uh, was obsession in drop D? No. You would know. Was not you would drop know. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> obsession was in, in regular tuning. I wasn't even okay. aware that this was in drop D because I'm playing lead on it. Yeah, well, that, yeah. And that's the... Uh, if my alternate version of Return to Tomorrow counts, uh, I recorded my guitar part in drop D so that I could play that open D note, but I don't know that that song actually counts. <laughs> I, played a, I played a guitar on uh, Devil in the Dark where all the, the strings were tuned to the same same pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that, that works, that works. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, it's in drop D, which, which I've, you know, it's the only song I've done uh, in that. And I, I really was doing these weird, I mean, there are some weird ass chords that I was coming up with in this drop D as you sometimes kind of have to do in, in some of these other tunings. Um, and that also was kind of what made it difficult once we went to play it live was me. It was number one, by the time we got around to it, remembering what those weird chords were <laughs> in a different tuning and then number two, when we went to finally play this live, we, we wanted to couple it with a Lerpa fight, which meant um, I needed to have my hands free to, to fight. Um, so Mike picked up guitar duty on this. And I don't, it, you learned it in Drop D, didn't you, Mike? Yeah, I learned to play it the, the way that you wrote it and recorded it, which, by the way, Thanks for making it so difficult and weird <laughs> and writing something that's almost impossible to play live and then handing me the guitar and telling me to play it for you. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, so no, when, well, you, when we played it live, you weren't playing guitar at all? No, I just sang and played the uh, tambourine. I did a oh, Davy okay. Jones move there remember. i remember okay. the first the first time i wasn't used to doing the um tambourine so the first time i was like hit it against my leg and like gave myself a bruise <laughs> i remember like, that. like i was like i had this big like black spot on my leg for yeah, a week it, it was a big bruise too like it wasn't yeah, it just was. <laughs> it was a heavy duty tambourine uh, but so, yeah, so when we when we did it live there, we we want to incorporate a Lerpa fight, which which meant I I had a Lerpa and then Chris, who was on you were on lead guitar still, yeah, uh, you you just took off your guitar and yeah. grabbed a Lerpa and we fought and then it was Mike and Patrick and Andy who kind of led the uh, the uh, fight music, yeah, fight um, music the, yeah. the the legendary yeah. fight music. So yeah, we we had to learn that. Uh, and kind of just in a way compose our own version of it, um, yeah. which I, I think worked. I mean, we kind of got it across. It, I think I don't I know. Thought, the... I thought that was the best part of what we did when we played it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, thought, it's, I mean, the it's song was fine when we about. played it, yeah. but that piece was, I think, probably. Yeah, I, I thought it. I thought it sounded really good. It, yeah. it did sound really good. I mean, not only is it just iconic in the first place, so you'd love hearing it, but just the the sort of heavy bass guitar and drums just doing it in a live setting, you know, make it very loud and tribal yep. and kind of yeah, the, cool. The original scoring is horns. And so to transpose that into, you know, guitar and bass and drums, it was it was a little, I mean, I think it was a little bit of a challenge, but I think you all pulled it off. Yeah, uh, yeah, the challenge is really going to and from the song, you know, a mock time, right? Yeah. And figuring out where to switch. It was as a weird to actually transition. Playing the other song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I do remember that. The, that. That was a lot of fun. I I really liked doing that, and I think the audience really loved it. They were really surprised that we did that. Um, I remember when we were writing the song, there was a lot of debate as to whether we should include that in the song i know you went back and forth on that noah yeah and we we eventually i think decided to just put this very like lo-fi background sample of it in right at the beginning at the of the beginning. song right yeah and that yeah. we did yeah. yeah it's right at the beginning yeah so it, it did uh show itself in there um yeah, it's i mean it's it's like two seconds yeah we, really yeah. we were also worried about doing that because we didn't want to put 
any yeah. music from the show mm-hmm. and then get in trouble. Get it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, this was year two, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. We were still nobody really knew who we were. Well, Chris, I remember you and I had to had I remember doing a lot of like uh backstage uh, choreographing. <laughs> Last minute backstage yeah. choreographing of how we were gonna. That was a Starbase. Starbase. When we released then, year two at Starbase, we did this for the first well, time. First right? of all, let's talk about the Lerpas. The Lerpas were these. Like, <laughs> That's right. It was basically a two inch dowel that, like, two inch um, wooden thick dowel that yeah. was you use like in a like a, a closet. Broomstick. Yeah, yeah, big, big thick broomstick. Yeah, and we took it, and I, I think they were maybe four, five feet long, and we took um, soda bottles and cut the tops off and taped them with duct tape to one end. Yeah, like two liter s- bottles. Yeah, and like sp- spray painted them silver, and then the other end was just a crescent or like a, like a half moon shape of cardboard that we just slid in this <laughs> slot that we cut. So it was like, they were super flimsy. Um, and somehow they stayed together through the fights. And I think, uh, I think we might still have one at Patrick's, right? I think it's in their basement uh, somewhere. It might be here. I, I just seem to recall seeing one recently. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think we still have those somewhere and, but I know they were pretty beat up. I had one in my garage for a while and it was looking pretty sad. I'm but pre- it was pretty easy to make if we ever want to do it again. I'm pretty sure uh, we did it at the Melody Inn, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I yeah. took a I took a butt into that to the mouth. <laughs> you did at one of the, mel- <laughs> at the Melody Inn. Well, uh, at Starbase, we had a lot more room. Yeah. yeah, we had this big open floor, and then when we did it at the Mel, it was a lot more cramped, and so we couldn't really swing those things. And I think it was just. The the chore the choreography that we had put together for Starbase didn't quite work in the smaller it venue. Just, it was just two inches too short. <laughs> yeah, I remember it being a lot of fun. It was silly, but we I, th- I mean I think there's a video somewhere, and I think we pulled it off okay. Yeah, it was yeah, well. It I, was the the ends a of good those... edition. Yeah, the ends of those things, like I said, was like a two liter bottle and a piece of cardboard. Yeah. So th- they weren't going to do too much damage. I was always mm-hmm. concerned when we were doing the sort of X shaped cross things oh, yeah. where you like hit the bars against each other, yeah. you know, like the handles against each other, because those were big, thick wooden ones. I was like, I, I kept thinking one of us is going to get our fingers in there mm-hmm. and, and yeah, just smash we're just going to smash our fingers real bad. But that luckily did not happen. After a while, didn't we, I think, didn't you guys trade off? I think Mike started doing some of the Lerpa stuff. And did we have the Gorn do it, or am I misremembering that? No, we only did, I only remember doing the Lerpa fight twice at Starbase really? and at the Mel. And then the Gorn fight, Mike traded off with oh, okay. others because he kept breaking his fingers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so he didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. <laughs> and honestly, I think that's why we eventually uh didn't didn't go back to doing the Lerpa fights too, because I think we were just whether we wanted to admit it or not, we were like, oh, we're getting old and, and no, we're I, we're gonna I hurt it ourselves. Was just logistically, <laughs> it was doing the transition and the music. Yeah. Plus getting out there. It just took up a lot of time. And, it's and I think a song we just that... decided that it would. And plus we just weren't playing the song. So yeah. I think I don't, I don't, I can't rem- remember playing it any more than a couple of times. I think that's key. It just was never in practice. So it was a huge, Yeah, if you were going to do it as a huge ordeal. You had to relearn this entire right. song and figure out, you know, how to yeah. do the fight in it too. So and yeah. the fight music and yeah. switching hey, back and forth. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it was yep. a lot of fun and I'd really love to do the song again. I do yeah. feel like we I feel like we did it more than twice though. But I, I I too only have a memory of twice, but I think we played the song more than twice, but I think the Lerpa fight only happened twice, but maybe three times. But uh, we, yeah, we I remember the song know. itself being played quite a few times. But yeah, yeah I think you're right about the middle part. I think we just changed it up for like Starbase Cindy and we're like, well, that went well. Let's do it again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then Noah got hit in the face with a two liter bottle. <laughs> well, there's a lot less room at the melody end. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
so, um, yeah, Chris, I always, yeah. Uh, so uh, up to this point, uh, you had played, kind of played lead a little bit on like one or two songs. Never. But, but they were like, yeah, they were like real basic parts. So this is really the first song that you played like a real lead guitar part on. Yeah, I had never, I hadn't played lead on anything before. And I don't remember exactly how this happened, but I think it was just uh, Noah already had this part written really. And so, and I hadn't played lead on anything and I just wanted to. And so I said, Hey, I can, I can do that. And I, as I recall, it was quite a struggle trying to figure it out and just like remember <laughs> what to do every time. <laughs> Uh, I, I never, we didn't play it enough that I ever got to a point where it was like muscle memory where I could just do it. Um, but I think I managed to, I think I managed to get it to a place when we were playing it where I could do it well enough that it didn't sound terrible. So Mike, did you in in fact find the original demo for this when you were searching today? Yes. So uh, okay. I, I, today I looked. I was listening back to the demos, and I listened to the, to the demo to this. Do you remember Noah that you actually sent out a second demo after this version, where you like completely rewrote the music? I, I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> I remember. I, it we, too. we went through it many, many times at practice. Like I remember, we completely changed what we were doing at some point, and then I think we completely changed it again. I think oh. we rehearsed this song probably in more different ways than any other song. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't remember that at all. But I wouldn't have even remembered that there was that alternate version, except Patrick, one year you made CDs for everybody. Um, and yeah. it was kind of like the, you know, best of, you know, yeah. best of each person. And uh, you, on mine, you included that alternate, that demo of that oh, alternate yeah. version. And uh, yeah. And I'd forgotten about it, but then what's funny is I I have this giant bank of like voice memo ideas for like little bits of songs or when I'm working on writing a song and I, you know I just record it in my phone and I've got this big bank of them and so sometimes when it's time for a new album I'll just go back and listen to all these old ideas and see if there's something that that strikes me as you know. And I just, I remember just waiting through like 53, like 20 second, 40 second little chunks of what was that alternate <laughs> amok time demo. So like I spent ages working on that thing apparently. And then is that, was that the first one? And I scrapped that to go do the other one or was the other one first and I didn't like it and submitted the second no, one and you, we all decided we wanted the first one no, the the song the way we play the song on the album it was the first one that you sent okay it was yeah and then the other one you sent like a maybe a month later or something and you were like here's a different version uh i don't whatever you guys think i don't care you know this one or the other one or <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know apparently we tried both <laughs> interesting wow I, might, I probably have that somewhere too because i keep all of the demos i'll have to check because i don't remember what it sounded like at all i i can i'll send it out if you want uh yeah I, do that i, I have just it just in case i just had i think i only had I only have two other things here on my notes one was the um and maybe you you can help me remember this, Mike, because at that time we were recording at my house and, and I remember you and I spending a lot of time doing overdubbing and, and mixing and just doing a lot of work on year two. Yeah. Um, but so the part in the song where I just kind of repeat that amok time over and over again um, <laughs> at, near at, the end, at right? The end, yeah. Yeah. There's some sort of weird, like guttural yell thing that I did, and we like turned it backwards, or we did some kind of weird thing to it, and like looped it through that whole section where I'm saying amok time over and over again. Yeah, I and that. I remember doing that. I I don't know if I could 
I mean, if I was listening to it right now, I could probably pick that out. I don't know if anybody else could. Maybe it just sounds like a keyboard sound or something, but I know it's in there. But I don't know if you re- remembered that. Yeah, I, I remember that. It, yeah, I think it just kind of sounds like background ambiance, but yeah, it's definitely like a vocal thing you did that we played with with a bunch of effects. Okay. There, there's uh, also like that part in the middle of the song where it, it breaks down and there's a bunch of like voice sounds and other like weird sound effects. Uh, do you remember putting those in there? No, I don't. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh. I do remember the end of this song being just whenever... <laughs> Tr- tr- trying to it, it trying to count doing the, the mock chaos. times and they're like out of like they're not like in exact time uh like like you would think they're in noah time yeah yeah they're weird yeah noah four time <laughs> <laughs> i i remember well, so- i remember all of us struggling with that at the first few times going through it and so were you talking about the time the like the break the like that real the quiet breakdown in the song like where maybe we put saying we put like weird voices or something in the background of that is that the yeah, part it's, of the song you're talking about it, it it's like yeah it's where it breaks down and it's just the it's just your guitar and there's these like talky like voices like saying like lines of dialogue basically from the episode it's not like the it's not like the computer generated voices it's like you doing the voices Interesting. I'll have to go back and listen to that part really closely. <laughs> see if I can <laughs> pick that out and remember it. Uh, I also did. Um, I don't remember what it was. I think it was one of our um, one of our like pandemic Zoom things. Maybe I worked out like a like a, a super slow dirgy uh, acoustic version of this, like capoed and in a totally different key in that. And I, I remember doing that and I think I have that in a voice memo somewhere, but I remember really, really liking that. I'm sure it's, I'm sure four people heard it. Do you have a country um, version that, too, that night? Noah? I do not. <laughs> I'm surprised and disappointed. No, it's only my, Mike is the only person you and Mike are the only people who do country versions. Of your songs. <laughs> That's fair. Cowboy or Patrick kind of did a cowboy version of, uh, yeah, Spectre of the Gun. I guess that's country. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's more that, western. That was, yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, it's fit the episodes. So. Country <laughs> yeah. and western, as my dad would say. Yeah, country and western. <laughs> Andy couldn't join us tonight, but uh, he probably has some stuff to say about this song, and we will insert that right here. Hi, Mike. How's the episode going? Uh, it's going okay. Better could, now. Yeah, we, we we could definitely use more insight. <laughs> did, did has anybody remembered much of anything about recording this song? Well, it's been twelve years, so no. Has it been twelve since year two came out? No. Nah. Well, I guess eleven since we were recording year two. So yeah. Okay. 11 years. Well, yeah, because 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 we released years one and two back to back. So, yeah, like probably more yeah. like 11. Yeah. 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 The, the, the memories were definitely shoddy. So <laughs> at best. <laughs> yeah. 2000. Well, 2011. So, yeah, that works. Yeah. I, had, I had to look at our own Spotify to remember what year, year two came out. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about a mock time. Um, yeah, horny Spock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so horny, he defied <laughs> captain's orders and turned a ship completely around just so he could go get married like a Mormon, so he could have sex. This is this is the way. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> I. Ugh. Horny Spock is definitely one of the the weirdest versions of Spock. Uh, well, you know, it's not often that he throws his plumic soup. <laughs> the weird carrot broth. <laughs> Ugh. 
I actually, I actually made plow meek soup, like from like a star Trek recipe book once. It oh, was yeah. not good. <laughs> it was not good. It's, it's like literally just a broth carrot soup. Basically. Yeah. It was a bunch of carrots and celery, just all like blended together and like into like vegetable stock. And that was about it. It was yeah. gross. Yeah. It sounds gross. It's just salty water, basically, with like a couple little like stringy celery chunks in it. Mm. And it's, it's 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 really no wonder he was so he was so mad and horny. He was he was like, I can't enjoy food, so I might as well enjoy sex every seven years. Here you go, Mr. Vulcan. <laughs> Mr. Vulcan. Oh, why did you have to quote one of the worst characters in Star Trek history? I don't know. I'm glad I'm glad he partially died. Did he? That one time when the whole Tuvix debacle. Oh yeah, no, we we yeah, were so all, almost rid of him. I know we're so they, close. They they should have just got rid of him when he didn't have lungs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a digression. <laughs> Do you have any other thoughts or comments on the episode? Not and, really. It's, and, and, it's been anything, a hot minute. Anything about Lerpas or Ponfar or I mean, it, or or how how hot T'Pau is when she's 90? Oh, God. <laughs> that she has to be carried out in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and there's apparently the weird horny shield that uh, that uh, it's, as long as you bang it, you can bang. Uh, <laughs> but then... But then he got Spock blocked, which we brought up in uh, Triple Triples. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the memes I made years ago. But yeah, we got also ended up getting uh, one of the best um, pop culture moments with the uh, Kirk and Spock fight scene, especially the music that they they, yep. they, 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 they they wound up recycling that for other episodes too, but just not as iconic, right? Yeah, it's used a couple of times, but it's definitely made for this episode specifically. Yeah. Uh, I want to say they reused the music in Gamesters of Triskelion. It's possible. It's been a while since I've sat down and watched that or even like paid attention to the music or anything, but yeah. yeah. They definitely I mean, use it in the cable guy. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I was about to bring up. It got us that famous Jim Carrey scene where <laughs> at medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> which uh when we did this song live uh we did get the uh the recreation of that scene basically uh yeah. between noah and chris and then it was it was up to us to learn that fight music <laughs> yeah that was definitely a challenge <laughs> i still think we should, probably should wind up re-recording this song at some point and doing like the fight scene music breakdown in the middle, just to just to have it, and you can even have like like Lerpa sound effects in the background, little chings and flocks <laughs> and stuff. We'll leave it up to to Chris and Noah to put those sound effects in. Yeah, I mean, we could just follow <laughs> them around with boom mics, basically, and be like, just just do what you would do <laughs> on a on a on either a carpet at Starbase Indy or on the floor of the Melody Inn. So those are the two places I remember recreating that. I think those are the only two places that we ever did ha had the did Lerpa we? fight. I don't think we ever did it anywhere else. Okay, yeah, because I because I know I know we've done the Gorn fight multiple places, but I oh, couldn't yeah, remember that. if we did the Lerpa fight any more than the two times. Nah, uh, when when we were talking about it earlier on the podcast, we we determined it was only two times. I'm just re reiterating. <laughs> well, do you have any uh, any memories or uh, thoughts or opinions about uh, the uh, the recording, the album version of the song that that, uh, that we produced? All I remember is uh, we had so many issues trying to figure out how to do that transition from uh, the end of the chorus going back into like the little pre-verse, uh -huh. the dun, 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 that, that little part. Uh -huh. I, I remember having to do that part over and over <laughs> and over again, just to get it down. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah. That's uh I think that's really the only memory I have of that song, unless you can remind me of something, because again, it's eleven years and I've not done a lot of drugs since then. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I we none of the rest of us didn't have a whole lot of memory. Actually, Patrick had the most memories uh, from working on it. He reminded us that Noah actually had us do a whole different version of it. We we like learned and uh, a whole another version of the song that we worked on for a couple of weeks before we switched back to the to this version, which was the original one. Whoa, I yeah. don't remember that at all. Yeah, I didn't remember that, but I mean he. He clearly remembers us doing it. So, uh, and and huh. Noah Noah had another demo that he sent out. So uh, I totally believe that we tried it. Well, we need to dig that out then. Yep. Somebody has but Noah. And knowing Noah and his crazy old phone, he probably still has it on <laughs> his phone. Yeah, I want to hear like that, like back to back to back. I want to hear him th- how he loves to hum ideas into his phone. Uh, the f- demo for what made the album and then the demo that we did for like two weeks or whatever and just to see like the, the weird comparisons and then finally the, obviously the episode's going to end with the song so yeah, if Noah can dig those out if and you we, can we find could, those somewhere we could do like a like a little how to construct a song video or something that just like shows the, the progressions that'd be good for Patreon yeah, actually, I thought about doing that with uh, with the empath because mm, you know, yeah. we, we've been working on it and it, it, we have a few different versions recorded now mm. uh, a, as it's evolving. And I have a few of those phone recordings of myself humming and then <laughs> making up like guitar parts and stuff. So we could totally make make like a, you know, uh, the evolution of a song video. Yeah, I like I like that we're just now thinking this as we're <laughs> doing the final album in the TOS run. Yeah. <laughs> Something we should have been doing all along. Twelve years later. <laughs> That's what Andy had to say about this song. <laughs> that guy. Very, very insightful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 in, in, anything else? Any other memories or thoughts you guys have about the mock time, the, the song or the episode before we wrap this up? I just got to say this. I, I um, At the time when Noah sent this out and we started developing it, I was just like, man, this is a great song. (laughs) And I still really like this song. Um, It's one of, one of my early favorites of Noah's, I think. Oh, thanks. And then I ruined it with with my lead guitar. (laughs) (laughs) It's a creative arrangement too. (laughs) Yes. Uh, re- regarding the episode, back when I was watching a bunch of Star Trek um, and becoming obsessed with it, I think this is the episode that I was watching when I kind of had that feeling wash over me when I was like, you know what? I really love Star Trek. This is really, you know, this is this is great. I should write songs about this. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I think I think this this was this like it was during like the whole Lerpa fight. I was like, man, this is so good. Like why you know why why don't I watch all of these episodes? That's a great idea. And then you did. And then you did. <laughs> and then I did. <laughs> five-year mission and do you like getting exclusive content you should head over to patreon right now and visit five-year mission 
because we've got all the exclusive content you're not getting on any other social media. There's videos, pictures, sometimes we post news there before we post it anywhere else, behind the scenes of us working on albums and podcasts, and sometimes just pictures of us goofing off that we don't put anywhere else, only on Patreon. And there are many options to choose from. You can be a lieutenant commander, you can be a captain, you can even be an admiral. Each of those comes with their own special perks. One of the perks of being an admiral is that you get to be a producer on this podcast. Currently, our producers are Carol Jones, Jen Tift, Helen Lake, Steve and Frankie Palopoli, Roxy and Becky, Debbie Renke, Madison Rachel Jones, and Jim Morehouse. So what are you waiting for? Go to Patreon slash 5-Year Mission right now. That's the number 5-Year Mission. And sign up. It's that easy. You know about fan sets? I know about fan sets. You want to hear about fan sets? They got a bunch of new stuff from Star Trek. I'm not even going to mention the other stuff because there's too much stuff from Star Trek to mention. Oh, man, they got a bunch of Doug Jones pins. They got one of him. It's the real-life Doug Jones songs makeup right next to Saru. They're all back-to-back. It looks like a buddy cop movie. Go get, go grab those up. Uh, they have a Robin Curtis autograph pin. How cool is that? Uh, R.I.P. Kirstie Alley, by the way. Uh, there's also the brand-new uh, Lieutenant Delta magnetic and everything. It's uh, full size. There's also the Europa Mission logo pin from Picard. Oh, there's the Frozen Cold Badgie. That was pretty awesome. Uh, there's also the Lieutenant Commander Delta from Future Imperfect Star Trek Prodigy. Anyway, head over to fansets.com right now. Fill up your card. You can get uh, 10% off your entire order by putting in the code uh, TREKGEEKS, all caps, one word, TREKGEEKS. Uh, spend more than $30, you get free shipping. Fansets, our pins have character. Thanks, Fansets.
But it's true and now I go To live with what I've sacrificed I'm on time, 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 I'm on time Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Five Year Mission Podcast. Thank you for joining us and listening to us talk about a song that we wrote and recorded over 10 years ago and are lucky that we have any kind of memory of things that happened from that time. <laughs> Live long and it's prosper. Long <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> For listening to Five Year Mission, the podcast. If anyone is interested in listening to more of our music, check us out on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, or anywhere that you can listen to music. Just search for Five Year Mission and we will be the first thing that pops up. If you would like to contact us, you can email us at fiveyearmissionband at gmail.com. You can also find us at fiveyearmission.net and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Five-Year Mission, the podcast, is a production of Coconut Media Works. Executive producers Bill Smith and Dan Davidson. For more great Star Trek discussion, discover the other shows of the Trek Geeks podcast network at trekgeeks.com or find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. This has been a classic Rittenhouse production.